Oh, hi. This week, we're gonna make me look like a Christmas tree ornament to have a work party to go to. And I just wanted an excuse to make this dress that I've had in my head for like six months. Even bought the fabric for about six months ago. I even already did a video adjusting the pattern to how I wanted it, but the fabric I chose for that was crap for that pattern. This is gonna be it. This is gonna be it. I mean, it's, it's right here. Spoiler alert, it works out fine. It's been a hot minute, but here's what you need. The best part about this beer is it's got a little dog on it. Actually, he's absolutely massive. He's half Great Pyrenees, half Golden Retriever, and I love him. He looks like Falcor. His name is Remy. He's one of the owners of Rockingham Brewing Company, and uh, I love him to pieces. Oh, it's so good. It's a rye double IPA, so it, I just, I love it so much. All right, as I mentioned, I found the perfect fabric for this project. Now, the first time I did this, when I worked through this book, Tilly and the Buttons Stretch, it's the Joni dress that I've been hacking and altering and tweaking and Frankensteining. I only had scraps to work with and by necessity it became a color block dress and I love how that one looks. It's just, it's empire wasted so I never wear it. I knew in my heart of hearts that I would absolutely love a high waisted version of this dress because I just don't like how I look in empire cut stuff. On non-directional fabric I think two yards would have been plenty for what I was doing but because velvet has a nap to it it thus becomes directional and yes, appearance-wise, it would have looked fine to flip like one of the skirt panels and have it going the opposite direction. You can't really tell unless you're like touching it. The comfort and delight I feel petting the dress while it's on me is worth the little bit of like skimming and literal corner cutting I had to do. There's just, there's just like little tiny tweaks that I did, but it didn't affect the overall outcome and I'm very, very, very smitten with how this came out. Oh yeah, also I started taking notes. By the way, thank you, Sarah. I have almost worked through this entire notebook. She handmade me this book and I love it, but I started writing my notes on this side and then somehow ended up over here. Okay, tips for working with this crushed stretch velvet, other than making sure the nap is going the right direction for all your pieces or it's gonna bother you, I promise, promise. But also, listen, if you only have so much yardage, you gotta do what you gotta do to make it work. No but you is gonna know. And for me personally, I don't want to come into close enough contact for someone else to notice the direction of the nap of this dress. <laughs> so I started out with the front and back bodice on the fold. I think I should have noodled around with the placement on the fabric a little bit more considering how specific I had to be with the direction of everything or maybe like cut the skirt panels first, but also the skirt panels were the easiest thing to modify a little bit. So I, I guess I am okay with how I went about the project, especially now that I know I want the skirt to be a little bit shorter. That would have made the tapering I did that little bit easier. But anyway, one thing at a time. The other tip I wanted to give is just make super sure your stuff is completely smoothed out because it's gonna be very noticeable if there's any like pucker or fold situation while you're cutting stuff out. And also definitely use a rotary cutter to cut this. Everything is so slippy. There's like a little bit of pile so it's gonna be harder to make it like lay super flat so if you're trying to chalk stuff out it's gonna move all over and same thing if you're just like cutting along and shifting stuff it's just much easier doing a rotary cutter specifically rotary cutter well you have a ruler or at least your hand pressing down next to it so that things aren't bunching and shifting around with the top layer it's kind of a pain in the ass fabric but so effective and like once you get the hang of it it's not too overwhelming i also know people that refuse to sew with knits at all because they're scared of it. So I would not say this is like a starter one. My first sewing projects were t-shirt stuff, so it was knits by default. And if I can do it, I promise you can do it. Just like be patient with yourself. I will say ballpoint needle, very helpful. And I also have a walking foot on my machine. Removes almost any headache with getting finicky fabric through the machine. Because you have a set of feed dogs on the bottom. Those are those little like grippy teeth that scoot the fabric along. If you have a walking foot, you have like two sets of feed dogs pulling stuff so it's more even and then if it's thin enough you're worried about it getting sucked underneath like if you stitch too much in the same spot and it like gets underneath the plate of your machine and you gotta unscrew parts to get the like ball of fabric and thread out from underneath it helps keep that from happening anyway i started with front bodice pieces this is the bit that i took a lot of time lengthening i will add a card up here so you know what i'm talking about because i still stand by the pattern hacking stuff the waistline does hit lower on the back side because i added the same amount of inches to the front and the back i do appreciate having the skirt 
a little bit lower because I do have a butt so it makes the fabric stick out so that like kind of shortens the skirt unintentionally. Oh and when I went to cut out the front bodice piece I always do this thing where as soon as I clear my cutting table and I lay the fabric down I immediately fold it in half even though when I'm cutting out narrower pieces like this that are on fold I always end up refolding it so why I don't just start that I don't know as I have said in many other videos I, I always make more work for myself for no reason I just don't know any better and I never seem to learn but I definitely took my time smoothing all of this out making it look a real nice also because there's like a pile you know like carpet pile a high pile is like a super cushy carpet and a low pile is when it's like very almost bare floor type carpet fabric has the same type of thing when it's flocked I believe is the term like this and also with like faux fur things like that so this is like very very short pile but still when you cut it there's still going to be little fuzzy fibers along the way so it's almost like the annoying tiny bits when you cut short hair down and they're just going to get everywhere <laughs> This was definitely one of those fabric cutting adventures where I ended up with just my glasses covered in little fibers, which also means I probably inhaled a bunch. Are you supposed to wear a respirator when you're working with fabric? Boy, this went down a weird rabbit hole. Okay, back to the sewing project we're doing. I'm already getting warm. I've taken like four sips of that beer. This is just what happens. This is why my nephews call me sweaty nerd. There, There's a very sound foundation to their accusations. When there's sweat, there's fire. <laughs> Oh, anyway, I spent a lot of time finagling where to put the skirt pieces to cut them out and I was futzing with stuff and then finally just decided, okay, I'm gonna get the top and bottom cuts done and get the top part of the waist sorted and then get it to taper out a bit to make sure I did measure around my hip and make sure where I was cutting was gonna be wide enough to fit around that part of me because the skirt pieces it was cut to on fold. I measured down from my hip to my waist. I didn't show any of this. I was very in the zone while I was working on it. So I was cutting from the waist. I measured down how far my hip was from there, which was like five or six inches. I measured across and I have a 41 inch hip. So I just made sure I had at least 10 and a half inches that far down so that it was gonna fit over my butt. Also, it's stretchy fabric, so like it would be snug, but would fit on me. We had some wiggle room, which is something to account for if you're changing the shape of a skirt. Like a lot of times the angle is the like degree it is because your butt is getting accounted for. So like, don't forget that you have a tuchus. Also, <laughs> I decided I wasn't gonna hem the skirt because the black and purple one that I made, I never hemmed it and I actually love how it looks because velvet can get very bulky when you have multiple layers going and I've washed this fabric I'm probably gonna wash this dress again just because I have cut stuff and I don't want like the little fibers getting over me while I'm dressed in it but like those lines are gonna hold and they just they look so clean when you cut them smoothly which I didn't do a great job of with this this first round because I was like adjusting things as I went but I ended up shortening the hem after and did like a very careful, tedious job measuring it out, and it looks much better now. Not that it was horrible. Nobody else would have noticed, but I, but I would have noticed it in my heart. Then I cut the sleeves out. I decided to go with the longest sleeve option that the pattern had, because I've done short sleeves, and I figure if I cut them long, I can shorten them, but if I cut them short, I can't then lengthen them. And it's a Christmas party dress, so I was thinking kind of warmer look we're going for. Longer sleeves wouldn't be the worst thing. As you probably noticed from the thumbnail, I did not stick with that decision. That's why I tackled this the way that I did, so I could edit afterwards, which is something I'm really trying to follow, like my gut instincts as far as the design of the thing. I liked how it looked with shorter sleeves and with a shorter hem, so I made it with shorter sleeves and a shorter hem, and I really dig it, and I think it looks a lot better for what I was going for. And I can just trust that, it's okay. Even if someone else would have done it differently for themselves, this is the dress that I picture having had in my wardrobe this whole time. And I was like sad to take it off and I, I will be very comfortable at that Christmas party, let me tell you. I, I might just be a little too warm even with the shorter sleeves. I'm currently in the state that I am where I have shorts and tights on in a short sleeve and there's a snowstorm happening outside and yet, here we are. <laughs> anyway, after the sleeves were cut, I have been very careful to make sure I am notching the back and front side because I know some sleeves, they're even and it doesn't matter at the top like which is going which way. Sometimes they're cut on the fold. 
These were not. And it's like a little bit off, right? Not that it's the end of the world if this type of sleeve is put in backwards. It's just gonna look that little bit neater actually going in the correct way. I think that's the only notching I did. Oh, at first, until I realized my mistake and then made like six more mistakes about the same step. I had one last piece to cut out, which was like a binding strip for the neckline. As I had the pile of fabric in my hand and about to walk over to the sewing machine, I was thinking about like the actual construction steps. And I knew that there were marks I had to make on the front bodice because there's like a real wild flipping situation that happens for the bust. And it's very cool. Like, I cannot recommend this Tilly and the Buttons book enough, especially if you are afraid of trying to sew with knits. It, it, it covers all of them. I learned a lot, even as someone who has been sewing with knits for over a decade. So, so good, so, so helpful. I obviously use her patterns a lot and I, I am not sponsored or anything. So there's Stretch, there's Make It Simple that has like easier projects. And then there's Love It For Stitch, which is more woven stuff, but it is a really good entry level into the basics and walks you through. And like, again, I've been sewing for a long time and I still learned a lot of stuff from all three of the books. Anyway, I will get off my Tilly soapbox and jump to the absolute shit show that was me trying to <laughs> get the front bodice piece sorted out. So I remembered that there were like dots on the pattern and I had my thread marking tool and was ready to mark those dots. And then as I'm looking at it, I see that I had notes on the front bodice pattern that I completely ignored when I was first cutting it out. So then looking at it again, I see that there's like a little notch and there's a note that says like cut between notches and then sew down. And I could not figure out what the fuck that meant. Apparently it's been long enough that I forgot everything about the last time I made this other than it was longer. So I opened the book and then I saw on like one of the photos that there was just little lines of stay stitching on those super curvy center parts. So I was like, oh, that's all it means. So down just means stay stitching which is a wild way to phrase it. And once I figured out that's not what I meant, I was like, right, I would have used different language if that's what I was implying. So I did write a note and draw a diagram that covered the stay stitching. And then thankfully, I looked at some other pages in the book to make sure like, do I need to use the thread marker? I can't remember since I already forgot what this meant. Let's just double check what the rest of the front bodice steps are. And this is where I realized there's notches you have to snip and then you fold it down and sew that down. So that's what cut between the notches and sew it down means. So I put a third set of notes with a second diagram marking what that meant. So hopefully next time I go to do this, I'll remember what the hell I was talking about. It's a blessing and a curse having this brain. Finally, after I did the stay stitching, cut the notches and flipped it under and stitched that down, I could start the assembly. Just so you know, if you are a bigger chested person, because it's there's not a ton going on here, there is definitely room for more happening there. There are plenty of versions of this on curvier bodies than me, because I know I'm very like straight up and down. There's like a little bit of a waist going on, but not much. Even with the, the Empire waistline that the original pattern comes with, it is well suited for that body shape. So I, I would recommend this dress for all types. As I said, I got really in the zone doing this. And once the front bodice flip situation was done, just put everything else together, standard weight, like shoulders first. And then yeah, there was essentially like a single fold bias situation for the neckline. It was really easy to put together. I inserted the sleeves facing the right direction. Very proud of myself for actually taking the time to look for the notches. Then once the sleeves were in, it was sewing down the side seams and like up to the underarm seam. Just kind of do that all in one go. That's my favorite seam to do, by the way. Initially starting with the shoulders, that's very satisfying because it's like the first step, but that feels like the most legit part. That's when it goes from being a two-dimensional thing to a three-dimensional thing for me, is, is sewing up that bit. Anyway, then I just attached the skirt front and back at the side seams and then attached the bodice to the skirt at the waistline. It, it's very simple construction once you have the front bodice piece put together. I did stitch the side seams towards the back, like the seam allowance. Again, I didn't serge any of the edges here because it's not, it's not gonna fray. I am gonna wash it again to get any like extra fluffy bits off of there from cutting it just to make sure I don't end up covered with like blue glittery fuzz all over me at the party. Yeah, the basic construction was complete. Then I went to try it on. My God, this is one of the most comfortable dresses I have ever made. Fitted, but not so uncomfortably. It's not like a bodycon dress or anything. The velvet 
going the right direction. Like it's so soft and it's so shiny without feeling too gaudy. The only problem is the initial sew, I had the longer version of the sleeves and I had the skirt at that longer length after adding the five inches to the bodice. So it's five inches lower than the original dress. Granted, the original dress was a little bit on the short side. This was a little bit too long and I, I felt very matronly and I didn't, I just didn't love it. So I just edited it, which again, this is the thing, like I'm trying to trust my styling eye for things. I'm so glad I did. The bunching that was happening right right here, because the sleeves were a little bit past here, couldn't deal with it. Couldn't deal with it. Holding my phone to text my friend that had messaged me while I was working on the dress. I did also send her pictures and were like, what are your thoughts? I already had an idea of what I wanted to do, but she is like a fashion expert, so I wanted to get her opinion on it, and she agreed with me. It was like, okay, I'm gonna go for it. So I ended up shortening the sleeves by almost 10 inches. I did make sure to re-tack down the underarm seam just at the very end, since that's the part that got snipped. I didn't want anything to start coming apart while I was wearing it. Likewise, I shortened the hem of the skirt. Can I even call it a hem if I didn't actually hem it? The bottom edge of the skirt, the raw dog edge of the skirt, I took up a little bit. I mean, I think that covers everything. My hope is I can insert some footage, at least some nice photos from the Christmas party because the brewery, I actually work part-time for Rockingham Brewing and they're throwing a little employee soiree. The brewery right now is decorated to the nines for Christmas. They put so much effort into the holiday ambiance, which made the Christmas market I put together there so wonderful. Like it genuinely felt magical. And I'm very excited for what we might do for the Valentine's market we're doing. It's going to be like the first Sunday in February. Very, very pumped. I can't believe this brainchild of mine is actually like taking off a little bit. It's nice. Anyway, focus. I'm going to be embarrassed to ask, but I am going to try to see if one of my coworkers that I know watches these. So hi to both of you, because I know someone else also watches. Hopefully I can rope him into helping me out with that. Man, I don't know that I've ever asked somebody to take a photo for me. Certainly not for any of my videos, I don't think. And you know, I need to just get over that. I, I think that'll be a good challenge for me. Exercise in voicing a need, and not that that means someone has to meet that for me, but worst they can say is no, I need to get that tattooed. Well, that one's already inked a little bit, but just get that up my arm that says the worst they can say is no. Because the number of times I hesitate doing something and put it off for ages, like the video I put up last week making the robot heart padding pacemaker friendly shirts for Rob Zar from Threadbanger, I could not get myself to ask him for photos of the shirts that I had made. I don't know what my deal was. I mean, we worked on it a lot in therapy, genuinely like that specific topic. And that also encompasses like other similar types of things in my life that it's not life or death to get those photos. So I felt like I was just gonna ruin someone's day by asking the tiniest favor, but obviously like Rob's the one that told me to make that video in the first place. <laughs> I'm really glad I finally put that one out. It took a lot for me to do that and it's out and I'm comfortable with it being out. I got into sewing as much as I did because of Threadbanger. So like I get it. I would also be excited if another smaller channel had done some similar type of project with him. I'm just glad I did it. I'm like all tensed up even thinking about it. It went well. It's good. It's a good project. He's very happy with it things went great. And now I don't have the guilt of continuing to sit on this because we did that stuff this past January. So literally almost a year. Oh, sometimes my brain is a real dick, but we're trying to overcome that. You know, we've had a lot of chats the past year. And yeah, as far as the velvet dress, I am really glad oh, that, okay, okay focus on my checklist of projects to do for 2022. This was on it. I mean, I bought the fabric, like I discovered this gorgeous teal aquamarine situation during the summer. Like I had to buy it because I, I knew what fabric I wanted for this final dress. And I did the pattern hacking, which a lot of times is what holds me back. Cause often there's like math involved. And I know when you tweak one section, anything it touches, you also need to tweak. And like, it's very heady. And I get e very easily overwhelmed with that kind of stuff. Those are the kinds of things I work on where I certainly can't listen to podcasts or anything where it's people having conversations, but like cutting out the fabric tonight and trying on the dress, all of all of the stuff I was doing tonight, I was listening to like really fun music. I've, I've actually actively been seeking out new bands because I haven't done that in so long. And I am very happy. There was a specific joy that comes with it. And like, 
all the dopamine. It's wonderful. I definitely am doing that thing where I'm listening to the same song like six times in a row because I want to hear every part, and like listen for it, you know? But when I'm doing the pattern hacking mathy type stuff, I can't even listen to music with words. I get too distracted with it. So I will literally put on an hour long loop of some of the music from Dr. Mario. I think specifically Fever is the one that I like the most because there's one that's like a little more chill and like somber but the one that's like anyway i'm glad the dress is done getting this off of my list for the year also feels very good and getting the rob shirts off of my list for the year very satisfying so the fact that i only have like two or three things left it, it might be the motivation I need to do it. Those videos probably won't get out till a little bit into 2023, but it still counts if I do it before the end of 2022. One of the items just says crochet literally one thing and I have yet to do it. And I have two beautiful sets of crochet hooks that I've been gifted and I have yet, I have yet to do it. Amber in the discord has been sending me a ton of really helpful links to like really beginner friendly crochet tutorials and I've watched a handful of them and I still have yet to do any of it so it's gonna happen we're gonna do it and I know there's multiple cosplays I haven't been doing listen y'all are welcome to put pressure on me feel free to sass me if I haven't done things that I said I was gonna do by a certain time because I'm sure there's shit that I completely forgot about and don't even have on a list anywhere so I can't even feel guilty about not doing them because I don't even remember that I wanted to do them in the first place and yes I will say there will be more weight to your sass <laughs> if you are one of the super wonderful lovely folks over on my patreon because y'all are why I get to put the time into the shop that I do and why I got to just like jam out to some new tunes and make this dress happen like I've been thinking about it all year and it's finally done and I got to make that because of y'all. I got to buy the fabric in the first place. You facilitated all of these things. There's so many factors that you probably don't even realize you helped me with. And if there's something you really want to push for me to do, like, yes, you, you get a higher vote. <laughs> I just hope you know how much of a impact you have on my like day to day, week to week. I get to spend the time workshopping the patterns, putting another version out, taking the time to tweak it and edit it and edit the videos, aesthetic beauty shots. I'm trying to get better about that. I will be using the backdrop more in the new year and also like maybe trying to just go out on location more. Much like I'm trying to trust my design sense, like my, my instincts in here for the fashion. I'm also trying to like fully flesh it out. Not just the garment, but a whole outfit and not just what I'm wearing, but like the setting. I think it'll be fun to play around with that. Not for every single project. I'm not going to go do a photo shoot in the woods for everything, even though that's the one type of photo shoot I can do completely by myself. But as I said, I'm going to try to ask for help with this stuff more and we'll see how it goes. I am going to go finish my drink, have some leftover cheesy bread and get some much needed Bert time because he had like a tune up at the vet and he always gets very grumpy with me when it happens so I need to give him some extra snuggles. Bert is my dog by the way. I, I don't have like a secret son that I bring to a vet for medical attention. <laughs> On that note, I will see you all back here with another video next Friday. Thank you so much for hanging out. It's exactly an inch and a half. As if I know what the fuck I'm doing. Hmm. Ooh, what did I snap? I'm fine. <laughs>